Imagine a situation that is spiraling out of your control and your organization is moving downhill really quickly and you feel that you are losing your sense of leadership. This is the first time that you have to deal with this crisis and you do not have the experience or the expertise to handle that. Now what do you do? Hi, my name is Dr. Edmund Chow. I'm here to share with you the eight principles of strategic storytelling, which is a framework to help you think about and recreate a narrative to help you lead with poise. In 1944, two cognitive neuropsychologists, Fritz Heidel and Marion Simmel, designed an experiment to test interpersonal perception. They asked their research participants to watch a two and a half minute animation video, which you're going to watch right now, and then to describe what is happening. One of the research participants recounted this, and I quote, A man has planned to meet a girl, and a girl comes along with another man. The first man tells the second man to go. The second tells the first, and he shakes his head. Then two men have a fight, and a girl starts to go into the room. She apparently does not want to be with the first man. The first man follows her into the room after having left the second in a rather weakened condition, leaning on the wall outside the room. The girl gets worried and races from one corner to the other in the far part of the room. The girl gets out of the room in a sudden dash just as man number two gets the door open. The two chase around the outside of the room together followed by man number one but they finally elude him and get away. The first man goes back and tries to open his door but he is so blinded by rage and frustration that he cannot open it." Unquote. If you look at it again, it is rather interesting to have this research participant talk about one woman and two men and them having a romantic relationship and one so worried that she's running around and the other one is so blinded by rage and frustration. And yet this romantic relationship is also fueled by jealousy, right? But in this study, 97% of the research participants all ascribed human agency and meanings onto these geometric shapes. But really, these geometric shapes were shapes moving in space and time, yet they behave as human beings. In fact, they described them uniformly, the big triangle, as aggressive, Warlike, belligerent, pugnacious, quarrelsome, troublesome, mean, angry, bad tempered, temperamental, irritable, bully, villain, taking advantage of his size, picking on smaller people, dominating, power loving, and possessive. And furthermore, in this study, Heidel and Simo argue that the movements were not interpreted in arbitrary or unconnected ways. Rather, they were meaningfully embedded in our picture of reality. Now, many years later, Jerome Brunner, another psychologist, explains this phenomenon succinctly in Acts of Meaning. He states that when people behave in a manner appropriate to the setting, people do not question why. But when it's an exception, the people the person, in fact, will always tell a story that contains reason. Now, if you think about it, as a leader, you are not necessarily working on the level of logic all the time. You're working on the level of emotions and feelings and affects, right? So to use stories as a way to engage the senses is one of the most powerful tools for you to work with them on an emotional level. Because as a leader, people look up to you for assurance, especially in a crisis situation. But if you do not know how to 
come up with a strategy or give a vision to come out of this uh, difficult situation, then you may lose credibility and trust as a leader. And in fact, you would not be able to reach the highest potential. Mm -hmm.